Hey guys, did you hear? Rogue from the X-Men? She's woke now, they, they made her woke. When you compare her profile in the background of the new X-Men 97 trailer to a few specific 90s shots, she looks way less caked up. I, uh, I mean, she looks like a totally different character, you guys. Disney's trying to sanitize our childhoods, or something. Yeah, in case you missed it, that's the general flavor of a lot of online responses to that trailer and the other information and designs Marvel have released. It is wider than the rogue's ass isn't as big, billions must die sentiment, but this is a key part of it, so let's try and figure this out. What's going on here? Well, part of this is the fact that, yes, a lot of the comparisons people are posting online are deceptive. For instance, yes, someone's behind is probably going to look a little more exaggerated if they're splayed out on the ground thrusting it toward the camera. And there are plenty of shots from the animated series which seem to show Rogue with a more modest figure, shots which could similarly be taken out of context and contrasted with the Rogue in the good old days images you'll see across the internet. But it's worth acknowledging that even if the redesign is smaller in scope than these people are letting on, there has been a slight revamp here, as with the rest of the cast, a revamp that in Rogue's case does look to have de-emphasized some curves. Now, in retrospect, Rogue was sometimes drawn in a fairly sexualized way in the 90s cartoon. No shock really, because she was very often drawn with one hand back then in the comics too. And look, while there's about a million important conversations to be had about the institutional sexual objectification of women in both these mediums, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with the original design. Sure, she looks a bit like a model, maybe the show should have had more women that didn't look like models, but you know, women do look like this, and right, this is a whole thing. I don't want to get too off track, but long story short, the original design looks like Rogue. The redesign still looks like Rogue. The original design is a good design in that she's visually unique in the team and it suggests at her personality through the jacket and hairstyle. The redesign is also a good design in that she's visually unique in the team and it suggests at her personality through the jacket and hairstyle. So what's the big deal? There have been a good amount of new rogue versions since the 90s with more modest physical proportions, which the internet, even the crustiest corners of, doesn't seem bothered about. No, the big deal is, of course, the idea that this redesign represents Disney's X-Men reboot trying to retroactively defeminize the older animated series. Something something woke agenda, something something Tomb Raider, whatever. One strand of that nebulous woke slash the agenda slash the message cloud of right-wing thought is the idea that modern corporations are systematically doing this, watering down the feminine in order to erode the traditional Western gender norms that serve as the last bulwark between modern civilization and literally 1984. And of course, by watering down the feminine, most of them do tend to mean introducing characters with any body type or dress code other than hyper-attractive pinup. This is a bigger thing in games gaming spaces, but you know, it all bleeds together. Of course, it can't just be that the examples they give, often pictured from the least generous angles possible, are merely a cherry-picked selection from a vast cloud of possible examples, a cloud that has moved gradually over the decades in line with wider cultural shifts around how we ought to represent the female body and slight steps toward entertainment spaces being less male-dominated, but which absolutely still includes plenty of female designs or characters catering to mainstream beauty standards. No, their comparisons are all totally representative and speak to a coordinated ideological effort by the Kathleen Kennedy Cabal or Woke Marvel or, you know, insert cultural Marxism light stand in here. Believe it or not, for many it's a firmly held conviction, and it does seem to be what all these rogue comparison posters are trying to evoke. At first glance, if you were to look past the conspiratorial stuff, there might be an interesting discussion to be had here about how you reboot a show after this long, a show from a different era, what allowances you make with designs and with production more widely for that shifting cultural milieu. But when you look beyond Rogue, beyond the ass comparison shots those dweebs are getting so frothy about, you start to see that this discussion might be a limited one. Because hey, come to think of it, Rogue was wasn't the only female member on the team, was she? You also had Jubilee, Storm, and Jean Grey. The first is an adolescent, but the other two? What are their redesigns like? Oh right, very similar. They still look like models, their profiles are pretty much identical. Even if we do follow the idiots and straightforwardly equate femininity with big booba, 
their femininity is fully intact. I know there are some voices out there that'd point to Storm's hair and try to argue that point, say it's a new degenerate leftist haircut. Aside from like Storm having that generic side shaved lesbian haircut. Ladies and gentlemen, Melanie Mack showing once again that anti-woke content creators are their own caricatures. But any of you that have picked up an X-Men comic in your life will likely recognize this for the classic Storm look that it is. And it even seems we see Jean pregnant in one of the trailer shots. So while you can base your opinion solely around the cartoon creep shot comparisons that did the rounds on Twitter the other day, upon looking even an inch further into X-Men 97, just, you know, watching the trailer all do it, it becomes clear that the woke agenda framing around the mystery of the missing curves just plain doesn't hold up, and what remains is exactly what it looked like from the start. It's grown men upset because a new take on a character that used to give them a funny, tingly feeling isn't quite as busty. It's a bunch of dudes trying to rationalize the anger they're feeling at the loss of their hot mutant waifu, with a sprinkling of culture war weirdos very knowingly fanning the flames of that anger. And that's a more mundane problem than the wokeness conspiracies it hides behind, but it is still a problem. I'd like to close us out with a few words from a delightfully titled Mary Sue article about this whole thing. If when a woman's body, a body that once appealed to your fantasy and now no longer does, shows up on screen, you feel as though something is being taken from you, it might just be because on some level you struggle with engaging with women as real people with thoughts, feelings, ambitions, and character, and in trying to avoid the discomfort that comes with trying to do that, you instead defer to the more familiar, comfortable act of viewing them as objects that have their value determined based on how closely they're tailored to your sexual preference. There's not a secret gender disruptive imperative behind the scenes at Disney HQ that suddenly made Rogue woke. There is, instead, a still pervasive passive misogyny that colors the way many of us instinctively respond to even animated fully fictional female bodies, one that's been weaponized time and time again by grifters and ideologues to stir up support and controversy. Again, that's the less flashy explanation for all this, but you know, it is the true one, and maybe that's worth something. Oh, who's that? Is, is that Morph? Yeah, we'll get to Morph. This video isn't the last thing I have to say on the X-Men 97 when woke discourse. I spun this out from the main video I'm working on when it became clear it wouldn't have fit in super well with the flow of the piece, so there should be at least one more video, maybe two, on this topic coming soon. Hey, you asked for it. In the meantime, if you do want to hear some more reasonable discussion about the parts of this I have yet to touch, I've put some other video suggestions in the description, but otherwise you're just going to have to listen to me thank my supporters, especially Hanan, Daniel Goldhorn, Karen Kuhlman, Magath, Ryan Emily, Something Something Capitalism Bad, Thomas R, and Weirdy Beardy, and close this video out for now. See you later.